Look, we had a, we've had a great conversation about it. Uh, we've just uh, had a joint, uh, joint uh, group, both made up of the House and Senate, that came together and said that until market conditions improve, it's something that we should stay away from. And I'll just be pointing. Look, North Dakota and Oklahoma are two great states to point out. And I've talked to the legislative leaders in both states. North Dakota is decreasing their severance tax so that they can get into an attitude to continue to allow production to happen. And Oklahoma is having huge issues with the fact that they tied their severance tax to the GRF and now facing a structure of imbalance. So when you're looking at the state of Ohio, you want them to continue to look and make sure, especially with gas natural gas prices being as low as they are with uh, uh, gas prices decreasing across the, uh, the nation and the world, it's something that I think if we want to continue to look at how do we let that investment spur, we need to be very cautious at it. And let's not forget, we have a severance tax now, and it's currently at a rate. And I think in the future, as we look at market conditions improving, that there can that can be a possibility. But uh, as I look at it now, there's that's not occurring. And so as far as I'm concerned, from our perspective in the House, that's not something that we're going to uh, take up and entertain. Well, I, I would add to that under general circumstances, I would have been in favor of that. But I have to agree with the speaker in terms of the current market conditions, which a lot of people feel is an intentional effort on the global stage to undermine uh, the, the American uh, oil companies. So um, if market conditions were to improve and gas prices were to go back up, though, I think it would be fairly appropriate for us to look at raising the severance tax and have it be comparable to some larger oil producers who traditionally have had uh, higher severance taxes than we have a Texas or Oklahoma. But under current market conditions, it, it would probably be uh, problematic to the industry to do it at this time. And Andy, to your question too, in the future when the market conditions do increase, and I, I don't want to speak out term to the leader, but I think it's extremely important that we look at tying that to how do we help local infrastructure back in the areas that are affected and not doing it to facilitate it somewhere else. Because at the end of the day, the severance tax would, would not generate that huge of an uh, income. Uh, that probably would make a big difference, but it would make a big difference, in my opinion, uh, to the communities that, of course, would need some more additional local government resources. And, and I agree with the speaker on that. I'm on record as having said that in the past, that I really do believe that should be tied to those local communities. Because once those resources run out, um, there needs to be something left behind that allow those communities to, to thrive and, and do better than they had done before that, that oil boom where they were economically, many of those areas were depressed and being from you know the part of the state where we're actually um, doing some of this it's important that those dollars go back into not only the infrastructure rebuilds that um, happen because of the wear and tear from the industry but also into training for um, not only the generation now doing the work but the future generations and so that's important and when I talk to oil and gas uh, industry folks they're not so opposed to uh, if there's a small severance tax that goes into infrastructure, that goes into training for their workers in that industry, they're not so opposed to it, if it as long as it's a reasonable one. It's when it's just throwing it back into the pot for tax cuts is where they say, well, how does that benefit the industry? So I think if we do have one, we need to make sure that that money is solely focused on local infrastructure and job training. Do you agree that it's not the right time because of the market? At, at this point, yes. Look, we said all along that that needs to be part of a holistic tax reform plan. Uh, I still believe that. Uh, and in the end, um, you know, I, I'll give Troy Balderson credit. He was the one that insisted that uh, a portion of those revenues be spent locally you know, to try and build local infrastructure out. And so that's something we support in the Senate. It was part of the Senate uh, discussions, part of the things we insisted on. And, and so that's something we continue to be at. But look, we all agreed that until the market conditions rebound, that it's probably not a good time to do anything that doesn't have a trigger. But I would, I would counter as part of this looking at the overall tax situation in Ohio, tax reform, it may be the best time to come up with what that formula should be, particularly if you tie it to a trigger that's not going to come into effect until the market conditions re rebound. The same reason everybody talks about the time to do redistricting reform is before anybody's on the ballot under the new maps. It may be time to talk about that tax reform before anybody thinks it's going to come into apply. And uh, we've had discussions of what that trigger would be, but look, most people don't believe that until the market prices exceed 40 or $50 a barrel that you've got a market that's going to support any enhanced Ohio drilling. And so certainly we want to get into a position that Ohio drilling is both viable and long-term long supportable. So maybe it's the time to continue to talk about what it should be with the open acceptance that it will not apply 
until you get to what that trigger will be. And so I would just encourage the groups to continue to have that discussion. But this stuff is real. I mean, at, at Valoric, they have half the workers that they had last year. You know, we this is a big this is a big company for the Mahoning Valley, and my father-in-law works there. You know, it's something that I see with my own eyes. Exterran just closed the doors. They just built a facility. Five, we were just at a ribbon cutting five years ago. You know, where the chamber was talking about this was going to be the future. We were going to have more Exterans. Well, now Exterran's gone in five years. So this is real, and so the the time is uh, we have to be very careful right now. Go ahead. 